Well hello everybody, Vicky here with a cameo appearance from Miss Pippa. So what I'm doing at the moment is, is I'm going around my 6x4 cards that we played with um, the oxides on in our craft and chat last week. Now I've gone through and I've backed them all with craft paper so that the, the watercolour paper is about 300 GSM and I've backed it with a craft paper which is 210 GSM so they're quite sturdy um, not bulky but they're, they're sturdy and they'll go in and out of tucks and pockets really well now you probably didn't really need to do this but it makes my little heart happy to know that they're all exactly 6x6 six six, which interestingly enough they will have a little bit of variation further down the track so don't get too caught up like I do in being exact and you can tell by the little slivers on the on the table there that I'm really not taking much off them at all although it does look pretty all that little bit those bits of paper there they, it does look pretty I think so anyway we're just going around for better or worse and getting them all nicely squared up now I've decided that um, yeah, I decided that we'd sew her, that I would sew around these. Now sewing is optional. I do it. I come from a sewing quilting background, so I always uh, feel quite comfortable in front of the sewing machine. Now this is my little paper um, sewing machine. It's an absolute ripper. Uh, my friend Sue uh, recommended it to me, and I'm very happy with it. Now the thing when you're sewing is, is I do hear a lot of ladies say, oh, it's so hard, my sewing machine won't work and my stitches are all wonky and I just get really frustrated. Um, there's a couple of different things and one of the things is needle fatigue uh, or just, yeah, blunt needle from needle fatigue. They do wear out. I find that if I'm sewing with fabric, I change it out every eight hours. For quilting, it's five and for sewing on the paper it's around the five now if you listen to your machine when you know you've got a sharp needle in there you won't hear the needle going through the paper but if you've got a blunt needle you'll hear it pushing like forcing itself through the paper and you can actually hear it sort of like thump 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 as it's penetrating through the paper it's time for a new needle if your stitches aren't working the other thing too is, is because we're using paper, it's very fibrous, so it gives off a lot of little, little bits of, I guess, fluff. So regularly go in underneath where your bobbin is, lift your bobbin out, and get a paintbrush in there or a vacuum cleaner, and give it a really, really good clean in and around there. Uh, you might find that the machine will sew a whole lot better for you. So this one that I'm doing now, it's the pink one and the yellow one. I've actually got modelling paste on them. Um, so I'm thinking that I'll use some reinkers or some sprays and have some fun with some just, just some paints, inks to get different effects. I've already stamped, I don't know if I've said this now, I've stamped and stenciled and used different things. Hello Miss Pippa use different things to get get some marks on the paper so one thing i use is a little kitty's block and a credit card run through paint on its edge you can use just about anything a bit of bubble wrap um, anything is fair game it's always fun to have a practice so now miss pippa's just interrupting us for the moment and we have to wait until she decides that it's okay for us to continue on. So what I'm what I've done is is on four of them I have turned them into postcards which we'll go into in a minute. I think oh I'm just looking at them. Because when I stamped them and I, I made the mistake of not turning the paper 90 degrees every time I put a stamp down. So if you keep rotating your paper, 
I find it easier to rotate the paper. You don't get the um, directional problem. So now what I'm doing is, is it's a Tim Holtz distressor I have in my hand and I'm just going around roughing up the edges just to give it a little bit of texture. So all of that's done now by the magic of editing and I'm going around and I'm just inking everything up. So what I decided to do is, I usually use the distress um, tools with the little round discs, but this is fairly thick paper and I've got it rough. I would shred a few of those little discs. So in, in my little basket I have some cheap sponges that I got in the makeup section of a discount chemist and I, I have them there. Yeah, okay, so I'm just telling you now that's what I've done with the craft paper on the back. And, and I was probably saying exactly the same thing as I'm saying now. Rather than shred a whole packet of, of um, discs, I've just grabbed the cheap, um, and it works fine, but you saw the little pile of foam that I had left there after I'd finished. Now, this is the first time I've used the applicator for this this gold. Um, I thought I'd use it because I, I get in such a mess when I do this. I, I use my fingers and I just have it everywhere. But I think I will go back to just using my finger. I think I thought because I had so many to do it might work better. Um, it works fine. I'm just thinking that it's probably not really I like getting my fingers messy. So this is where I'm deciding now which ones can go landscape so we can put um, postcard markings on the back like that. So I've done four of them and I've used the Stampers Anonymous set and it's a, a set that just says postcard in all different sorts of fonts and sizes and I've put little stamps there. So now I'm going through looking for ones and I'm counting up. I think I counted 17 um, with a couple here. But that's a 7x5 tag. I'm not sure why I put it to the side. It could have been done with, with these ones. But anyway, I'm just deciding which ones will sit nicely uh, to to do the stamping with and like I said like this one for instance you can even though they're num random sort of imperfect designs it's definitely got a directional so these are all ones that I've deemed that I don't think would sit love that one that's why I tapped it it, it is a lot prettier than what it looks like there so it looks like we've made the decision now I'm using the, the stamping platform. I've had this platform for quite a while and I've never really bothered with it. You know, too lazy, too much of a hurry. I don't know why. But I have found that these days with clunky fingers and clumsy, I'm actually finding it a quite beneficial using the stamping platform. It actually took a little bit to get used to it but now that I'm used to it, I find that I am automatically grabbing for it unless it's just a small stamp. And, and the beauty of that is, is you get even pressure, but you also get the option of being able to go back in and stamp it over the top. So what I'm doing now is, is I'm just drawing the lines that go across the page underneath postcards and then we'll draw a dotted line up through the centre. I'm just measuring halfway. Now rather than having to mark top and bottom, if I line it up square on my grid, I can just lay my ruler down and line it up on the grid line and I know that I've got a straight line. So now I'm just getting some stamps. These are actual stamps that I've used. I do. I am fortunate enough to have been able to get quite a few of them and not really used them. 
which is crazy. So the, this, my next year's journey, um, it's not a calendar year. Um, my journey going into this next year and is to start using what I've got. Um, there's, there's absolutely no point trying to save it or worried that I'm going to waste it. Um, let's, let's just make a pact together that we're all going to work at the same thing. Now, I actually glued that one upside down. <laughs> so I was fortunate enough to be able to lift it and get it and get it in the right on the right way. So now comes the embellishments. Now to say that I'm slow would be an understatement, and it's almost painfully slow with me doubling double timing the video. But the good news is, is you don't have to sit through all of it. My biggest issue when I come to embellishing goes back to what should I use? Is this good enough for this purchased bit of all that nonsensical, silly thinking that we put ourselves through? Or at least I do. My, I don't know if anybody else out there does the same as me. But I do tend to use a few favourite die cuts, like this wildflower one that I'm just gluing down now. I have used the, the black silhouette, the silhouettes of this um, die cutting set hugely. So I have definitely got more than my money's worth out of, I believe it's a, um, well it's Tim Holtz, but I'm, I believe it's the Wildflowers um, series and I think this may be one of the first that came out, but uh, don't quote me on that. But I love them, I love them, they cut well and I always have um, quite a few of them cut out ready to go because it's, it is my go-to and I think on this back, bright background it just looks amazing. Um, I like it anyway, it, it makes me happy. I actually had to cut these out of the die because I can't find where I put the ones that I cut out. Oh, my girls, I'm trying to get organised. I really am. I really am. Um, it just takes a wee bit of time. So anyway, now we've got to go through the pain painful process of figuring out what we're going to put with it. Um, it's a bit difficult to see what I'm up to, and I'm trying to go on memory here because I'm doing a, um, a voiceover, the little recording... Um, what do you call a window is right smack in the middle of my screen and right smack in the middle of what I'm working on. So I'm just going through here fiddling with bits and pieces trying to figure out what it is that I want. Now I did show you a minute ago a stamp. It's a Tim Holt stamp and it's all little sayings on it and the sayings that are on that stamp I'm 99% sure that they are the same as what you get in those little sticker books. Um, so I can see that, that stamp getting a lot of use over, over the next coming years because I love this. It, it looks like he's picked the best of them and I like all of them. So the good thing about that now is, is is we can stamp them out, have multiples as many as we want to, and we don't have to keep um, buying the sticker books. Not that you need to anyway. Um, so, okay, what I've been doing there when I was talking about the stamps is I've found a, um, a commercial piece of ephemera, and because it wasn't very thick, I've actually mounted it on a piece of craft craft board and then I've decided that I would do it one more time and the second time it looks like I've given it a little border that just that just gives it um, a, a, like it just firms it up it just makes it a little bit stronger and it sits up off off the page and the thing is it's like I could have used mounting tape but I feel that because this is either going into a tuck or into a, a pocket, I'm a bit reluctant to use uh, mounting tape unless it's at the top where I know it won't foul, usually on the top right hand side. 
um, so it doesn't foul on a pocket that you're putting it in. So now I've just got a bit of coffee dyed muslin and um, some people call it cheesecloth. I think I used to always just call it cheesecloth, but it's, it's actually not cheesecloth. It's a lot looser weave, so I do believe it is muslin. And I just like it, just gives a little bit of interest. Now I'm just pointing there to say that this is the spot that I don't think I want to leave bare. But as I look at it, I actually think that I probably should have dropped it a little bit further down. I've, I've put it opposite the, the widest part of that flower, as I think it would have been better if I had have dropped it down a little bit further than that. So this is, this is actually about four and a half, five hours of recorded um, video. So these things don't happen in a hurry. Um, it, it, I love the journey of creating. Oh, hi, Miss Pippa. She sort of got like, um, <laughs> manhandled across. <laughs> just sit over behind the sewing machine there because I just, I, I can't do this while she's sitting on top of it all. So sometimes she does get hunted off and, and she sits there and gives me the evil eye. It's like, I don't believe you did that. Do you not know who I am? <laughs> Oh dear, I always make up things that, you know, like I, this is what they're thinking. Graham thinks I'm balmy, but you know what, it amuses me. Um, we have four, we have three four-legged children in this house, and they are a handful. They are bossy. <laughs> they boss me around. I've got to get tougher. I've got to get tougher. And, and it's like... I said that to Sue one day and she just said, yeah, no, Sue's my friend. No, no, you're just talking rubbish now, I'm going. <laughs> she doesn't believe that I can get tough with these animals. Um, neither does Graham. So you can see where I've just put that little label up there. I think it would have been better if I had dropped it just that little bit further down. So now I've got the blue one and I looking for things now i love these this i think this is his latest wild flowers funky flowers um once again don't quote me on that um but it is tim holtz and and those flowers are really super cool but i haven't cut them in uh, i cut them for something else and i haven't used them yet so i thought that you know i'll just borrow them but I, go, I seem to always go back to the black because I love the contrast. I love the simplicity of it. It, it really does just it, it's clean lines and I don't know, I just like it. So now I'm looking for some sort of um, label, something. Well, that just didn't go at all, did it? And so what I've got up the top there is, is I had little bits of off cuts from the paper that I used with the oxides and I, I cut it down. That was before I cut less than an eighth of an inch off to square it up. <laughs> but hey, you know, it's got to be right. Um, so anyway, with the little off cuts, I stamped, I stamped out some labels, I believe dark room door um, labels. And then I've gone through and I've used that stamp set that I showed you before. Uh, and, and just got some words down on, on labels and it's just left over um, from our play with the oxides. Now that's a Tim Holtz crackle stamp and I've just put it lightly on, the, on this label that I'm using. Now this is, this is a um, rub-ons. I have no idea how I ended up with this sheet. At one stage a year or so back, I bought a bundle of scrapbooking stuff. Oh, Louie. Louie, I think you need to go to the toilet, man. Oh, oh that was probably more information than you ladies needed. <laughs> My eyes are watering here. And anyway, back to what... And I think this came in that um, scrapbooking bundle that I bought 
Now, they are rub-ons, but I do believe... Now, I don't know if this is right or if it's wrong, but I have found that the older rub-ons get, the harder it is to get them to stick. Uh, it could just be me, but that's my experience. So I go back... I mean, this is you're just going to get sick and tired of hearing me say this. Let's go, girls. Let's start using this product that we've got. Let's start using these mediums. Um, and, and while we're using them, we can save our money so that when it's all gone, we'll have a nice, tidy little um, amount of money where we can go and buy some new stuff again. But, yeah, it, it, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission, so I'm going to drive you all absolutely bonkers doesn't mean to say that I'm not going to shop but I need to start using this stuff up because I hate waste I'm I'm really really bad when things like when if for example in my fridge at the end when we go shopping at the, at the time to go shopping and the fridge is there if I so much as throw out three beans I'm upset it's like a real real point of honor that I don't throw out anything that could have been used does create problems though because I do hang on to stuff that um, takes up a fair bit of room that I'm not prepared to get rid of yet so it's time it's time girls so I'm just going around here and I think that's the second one and I was most upset because I cut it crooked I, it went through my head that I couldn't use it and I was just about to put it in a bin and then when I tried to find out where it was a bit crooked I, I had a bit of oh no this is where I cut it crooked the second one mm. I was I was really upset and and then after I inked it and I had a look and it's like seriously girl get over it and like I said, once again, just double mounting it on a little bit of um, cardstock just gives it that little bit of dimension and, and gives it, like it just gives it strength and, and it, it stands alone and on it, it, it works really, really well. So here's my love flowers. I don't know what everybody else has been up to, but it, it's a week, a week has gone where I've been, because I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. I mean, I still have pain issues, but the reality of that is, is they're never going to go away. I, I um, fluctuate between how I am now and to when I need treatment again. So I'm, I'm feeling really, really good. I've got my energy back and my brain's mm, it's about as clear as what you're going to get it. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it for the moment because in another three and a half months I'll be back to where I was two weeks ago but hey I'm here now and let's enjoy it now I did make that label to go in that spot but now I've done it I really it's just too big to, to be sitting halfway up so what I've done is is I've got out um, my little background stamps here now these two that you can see to the left with the circles on it or the, all three of them in there a dark room door but these are great great to get a little bit of um, interest and movement in backgrounds and I stamped it off before I put it on the card because I just wanted it to be muted I didn't want it um, to be a feature so here we've got the the cards that I've been able to do tonight. Um, I'm really happy with the way they've come out. I have decided, and I've got two there that I haven't done yet, but that I'm, I was just playing around with. But I've just I've just hit a wall and thought I I just have to go to bed now. I was so tired, so I've just put a couple of things on, there and I don't know whether or not these embellishments will stay on these cards but that that's where I'm up to with it um, and I've got all these now I I did want to do them all and I did want to have focal points on all of them ready to go 
but as I've been um, decorating the half a dozen, I got to thinking that it might actually be better to leave these in my, um, like I think everyone calls it mass making now, I used to just call it production line. Um, but I'll, I'll swing over to the term that's been, been coined by, by everybody. Uh, you've got a box, got an area where I keep things that I've, I've done on a mass making so that when I'm doing a journal or if I want to thank you or a hello, how you doing, you know, like a, a card, I, I, if I'm sending it to a fellow creator, I will send a journal card or a tag and I could mount this and send it as a card if I wanted to. So I'm thinking that I'm going to leave all of these ready to go and then I can match it with the embellishments that, that suit the occasion. So this is it for now, just having a look at them, having a think and making sure I I really do like them and I'm happy with them and mm. oh, I hope everybody is doing okay, everybody is well. I've had lots of fun doing this project and finally, finally I've finished one which is another story that I'll tell you about another day or I might have actually told you in the craft and, <laughs> craft and chat, I'm in mean, a bit of a mess. I should take a bit of a video and um, post it so you can see what my creative space looks like at the moment, but I think I'd be very embarrassed. But anyway, that's it. Be kind to you and be kind to the person standing next to you and I hope to be seeing you really soon. Bye for now.